I just got some new toys. Let's take them for a spin and check them out. I ordered all of this online from Blick Art. This includes a travel palette, a bunch of new paint, a flat brush, as well as this really cool painter's diary. I'll share with you all these supplies as well as my thoughts. There will be timestamps below. These first two paints are French Ultramarine from Daniel Smith and Yellow Ochre from Holbein. The Ultramarine was a replacement for my Windsor Newton tube, and then I wanted a Yellow Ochre with a higher tinting strength, so that's why I got Holbein's. Next up are three smaller tubes of paint I picked up. While big tubes are the colors I like and will use, smaller tubes are ones that I experiment with. I've got Transparent Pyrrole Orange, a nice vibrant color, Hansa Yellow Deep, a warm yellow, and then Indothrone Blue, which is this dark, deep, luscious blue. While Indothrone Blue has been on my radar for a while, the other two kind of came up suddenly. As you can see, I'm running low on some of my other colors. Pyrrole Scarlet and New Gambos are some of my favorites, so it gave me an opportunity to expand my horizons. I've heard great things about Hansa Yellow, and I wanted to try it out, and it's a single pigment color. The Pyrrole orange is not meant to replace the pyrrole scarlet but it's a companion piece and I actually don't have an orange in my palette so I wanted to try it out and anytime you get new colors the best thing you can do is just practice swatching them out so that's what you're seeing here just me testing out all of my new colors with some of my other colors to see how they interact something I noticed was that the new gamboge makes more vibrant colors than the Hansa yellow deep which I thought was interesting but this experimentation is just going to get you more used to the colors and see how they interact and how they'll fit into your work Workflow. My biggest surprise was that transparent pyrrole orange. It's such a dynamic color and I'm so excited. This is a new item I've seen around for a little while now. It's called a painter's color diary. It basically gives you a journal to swatch out all your different paints, whether it's transparent or opaque mediums. I really like how it has a protective paper color as well as that black line for the opacity test. And I think it's going to be really useful. I thought the best way to check this product out was to just swatch all the colors so you'll see this happen. Keep an eye out for my new colors as well as my comparisons between my French Ultramarines and my Yellow Oak. I think it's pretty interesting. Overall, I thought this was a worthwhile purchase. The paper is 100% cotton, so it's really durable. It'll handle whatever you throw at it. I also like the lines it gives you to write in whatever information. In this case, I use it to put the brand, color, and pigment info in it. If you've never swatched your paints, you really need to. It's a great tool to get to know your paints and also just to see how the colors compare to each other. For example, you can really see a big difference between Windsor & Newton's yellow ochre and Holbein's yellow ochre. That's really important. This was also just helpful for me personally because I'm trying to construct a new color palette and having all my colors out in front of me to pick and choose was really useful. I think there's a lot of potential with this color diary in particular. I'm really excited, for example, to use gouache on this paper. I have a bunch of gouache that I want to swatch out. I also think it would be great to have a page specifically for a certain brand of paints and you could even do mixes and see how your different colors mix and how they play out. I think also this is really helpful for watercolor just because of the grain granulation effect. As you can see in this, I pre-wet some of my paper and I wanted to test out the granulation on two particular colors and it works completely different than if you just paint on wet on dry. So yeah, I think this is a really great buy. I'll try to have links to everything in the description. I'm not sure how to pronounce this, but I think it's Meaden. This is Meaden's Empty Metal Palette. The reason I got this is because I don't really have a great portable palette to bring with me. I have this micro palette that is very tiny so it doesn't give me a lot of mixing space and I have this big porcelain palette and I love it but it's again not very portable. And then this is my first palette I ever got. It's a small plastic palette and I'm using it for my gouache because I don't really have anything better to do with it. And so with my watercolor I really needed something else. This palette seems to check all the boxes that I'm looking for. One, it's metal which is kind of in between porcelain which doesn't stain and plastic which does stain. Second, and gives more mixing space compared to what my micro palette provides. Third, this palette comes with empty half pans, which means I get to fill it up with whatever colors I want rather than resorting to what is pre-selected for me. As you can see, it splits up nicely into various parts. You'll be able to clean this really easily. Now it's advertised as being able to hold 12 half pans and coming with that much, but for some reason I got 14, so it gave me two extra ones. Maybe that's normal. Let me know if you've bought this and that's the case for you. Now, most of the rest of this video is going to be me filling up the half pans with the paints I've selected. I'll probably have a future video on why I selected these colors and how to create a limited palette of your own. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on that. It's really important and 
really helpful with color theory, especially for beginners. Let me tell you what I'm going to be doing here. I'm going to be filling the pans with as much paint as I can at once, and then I'll take a toothpick and stir it in. This allows the paint to settle more fully and fill up as much area as possible. This is really important as it dries, which I'll come back to towards the end. And this is the first time I did this, but I thought it was really easy and wasn't too difficult. I did have trouble with my Pyrrole Scarlet because I am almost out of that paint, and so I really struggled to get every last drop of it out. I end up actually cutting the tube off screen to get more paint into the into the pan. But yeah, I hope you enjoy the next couple minutes. I'll come back towards the end with a couple more pieces of information and my thoughts. If you ever fill up your own half pans, be aware that as it dries, it will sink and settle towards the bottom, which means you'll have to come back through and fill it up more. And so I do that, I do the same process, I fill up with paint, I take a toothpick and I stir it all up again. And I found that the paint took a long time to fully dry but it's really workable after a couple hours. And as you can see, you can fill up the pan with significantly more paint. As I place these pans back into the palette in a harmonious color order, I just wanted to quickly say thank you so much for this year on YouTube. I've only been here since August, but it's been a lot of fun. I've got to know several of you pretty well. And this channel has had so much more growth than I was anticipating, which is awesome and kind of scary, but exciting. I hope you stick around for the journey that's to come. 2024 is going to be full of different videos that I've been thinking about. You can expect some more painting tips, such as why you shouldn't use black paint as a beginner. And there will also be some color challenges, I have some plans for some color theory videos, and there's some other things I want to just keep secret and under wraps for now. And once again, thank you again for these past couple months, and thank you for the future couple months. These pans slide around in the palette, but it's nothing that a little tape or magnet won't fix. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, and if you want to learn an exercise that will help you grow fast as an artist, check out this video.